Welcome to the ACE Project, brought to you by the Literacy.io team at Texas A&M University. I'm your host, Ashley Stack, also known as Captain Comprehension. We are so excited you'll be joining us on this reading journey and hope you and your child enjoy this time together. So get comfy, rev up your brains, and get ready to think, because we are ready to help you become a comprehension detective. Hi, Super Readers. My name is Captain Comprehension, and I am here to guide you as you become a comprehension detective. Welcome to podcast number 33. This month, we're reading Snowflake Bentley. Have you ever marveled at the snow when it falls? Much of what we know about snowflakes today is thanks to Wilson Bentley, whose love for snow was so incredible that he wanted to share the beauty of snowflakes with the world. But to do this, Wilson, or Willie as he was called as a boy, had to overcome some challenges. Let's read to find out how Willie overcame these challenges to share the beauty of snow with the entire world. Before we begin, let's go over some important vocabulary that will help us better understand this passage. Our first term is evaporate. Evaporate means to turn from liquid into vapor or go out of existence. A synonym or word that means the same could be dry out or disappear, and an antonym or opposite would be to become wet, damp, or liquid. Then we have the term microscope. A microscope is a tool used to make objects look larger. We don't really have any synonyms or antonyms for this one. Finally, we have the word intricate. Intricate means very detailed or complicated. A synonym or word that means the same might be complex, detailed, or involved. And an antonym or opposite would be simple, average, or straightforward. Pause your videos. It's time to kick off your questions. Text POD33, that's POD33, to 866-903-2545 to get started. Which word helps the reader understand the meaning of evaporate? A. Melt. B. Break. C. Twitched. D. Breathed. Which word is a synonym for intricate? A. Simple. B. Average. C. Complex. D. Disappear. All right, detectives, let's read the story. Hope you enjoy reading Snowflake Bentley. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. Wilson Bentley was born February 9, 1865, on a farm in Jericho, Vermont, between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield, in the heart of the snow belt, where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother, Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. Willie's mother was his teacher until he was 14 years old. He attended school for only a few years. She had a set of encyclopedias, Willie said. I read them all. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the icy crystals. From his boyhood on, he studied all forms of moisture. He kept a record of the weather and did many experiments with raindrops. Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same, that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs. For three winters, he tried drawing snow crystals. They always melted before he could finish. He learned that most crystals had six branches, though a few had three. For each snowflake, the six branches were alike. I found that snowflakes were masterpieces of design, he said. No one design was ever repeated. 
When a snowflake melted, just that much beauty was gone without leaving any record behind. Starting at age 15, he drew a hundred snow crystals each winter for three winters. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 16, his parents spent their savings and bought the camera. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of 10 cows. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. The camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3,600 times its actual size. Even so, his first pictures were failures, no better than shadows, yet he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. One day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment, and it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. Willie's experiment. He used a very small lens opening, which let only a little light reach the negative, but he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. He learned, too, that he could make the snow crystals show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut all the dark parts of the negative around the crystals. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph. But Willie didn't mind. But in those days, no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said the photographs would be his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. When he found only jumbled, broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters, he was able to take only a few dozen good pictures. Some winters, he made hundreds. He learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits, molecules, of water attach to the speck to form its branches. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystal branches grow. A little more cold, a little bit less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why in all his pictures he never found two snowflakes alike. The best snowstorm of his life occurred on Valentine's Day in 1928. He made over a hundred photographs during the two-day storm. He called the storm a gift from King Winter. Willie so loved the beauty of nature he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs jeweled with water drops and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. Willie's nieces and nephews lived on one side of the farmhouse that Willie shared with his brother Charlie. Willie often played the piano as they sang and shared stories and games with them but his snow crystal pictures were always his favorite. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. Many colleges and universities bought lantern slide copies of his photographs and added to their collections each year. Artists and designers used the photographs to inspire their own work. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. 
He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on snow, the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Willie said there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 66 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not ready to quit. Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Wilson Bentley's book, Snow Crystals. By 1926, he had spent $15,000 on his work and received $4,000 from the sale of photographs and slides. Less than a month after turning the first page on his book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to make more pictures. He became ill with pneumonia after the walk and died two weeks later. A monument was built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. Forty years after Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farmer scientist. And his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont, past mountains, over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know the icy wonders that land on their own mittens, thanks to Snowflake Bentley. The plaque on the monument says Snowflake Bentley, Jericho's world-famous snowflake authority. For 50 years, Wilson A. Bentley, a simple farmer, developed his technique of microphotography to reveal to the world the grandeur and mystery of the snowflake, its universal hexagonal shape, and its infinite number of lovely designs. The average dairy farmer gets up at dawn because he has to go to work in the cow yard. I get up at dawn too, but it is because I want to find some leaf hung with dew or a spider web which the dew has made into the most delicate ropes of pearls. I take my camera with me, get down on my knees in the wet grass, and photograph these exquisite bits of nature. Because I do this, I can show these lovely things to people who would never have seen them without my help. They will get their daily quart of milk all right. Other farmers will attend to that. But I think I am giving them something which is just as important. W. A. Bentley I hope you enjoyed reading that, Comprehension Detectives. Now it's time for us to identify the text structure of Snowflake Bentley. Here were some of the things I heard. Never did watched, worked, could not share, decided to save, but... Okay, use your text structure bookmark and ask yourself, was there a problem? Was it solved? Do we know what caused the problem? Was anything compared? Pause your videos and answer the question, what is the text structure of the passage? A. Comparison B. Cause and effect C. Problem and solution or D. Cause problem and solution Welcome back, detectives. It's time for us to write our main ideas. So I hope you identified the text structure as being cause, problem, and solution. We'll use the sentence stems, the cause is, the problem is, the solution is. Pause your videos, discuss what you're going to write with your adult partner, and then text in your answer. Hey, super readers, here's what I wrote for my main idea. The cause is that Willie Bentley could not find a way to save snowflakes at first. The problem is that he could not share it with others. The solution is he began to photograph snow crystals so that he could then share them with the rest of the world. How does your main idea compare to mine? I bet it's spot on. Okay, detectives, let's use our main ideas to answer a multiple choice main idea question. What is the best main idea for the selection? A. Willie Bentley compared photographs from different seasons and the things they captured in the photo. B. Willie couldn't save snowflakes to share their beauty with the world until he began to photograph them. C. Willie Bentley photographed snow crystals all throughout the winter to share with the rest of the world. D. Willie Bentley could not catch the snowflakes and share them like he could with insects or the flowers he took to his mother. This made him sad because he wanted to share the snowflakes' beauty. 
Pause your videos and text in your answer now. Okay, detectives, it's time for us to extend our main ideas to write a summary. Remember, we said the main idea is the cause is that Willie Bentley could not find a way to save snowflakes at first. The problem is that he could not share it with others. The solution is he began to photograph snow crystals so that he could share them with the rest of the world. What are some details we could add to each part of our main idea to extend it to a summary? Hmm. What happened when he tried to save his snowflakes? Why did he want to share them with others? What happened after he was able to photograph them? Pause your videos and discuss some details with your adult partner now. Welcome back, detectives. Here's what I wrote for my summary. The cause is that Willie Bentley could not find a way to save snowflakes at first. Bentley tried using an old microscope to draw snowflakes, but they always melted before he could finish. The problem is that he could not share it with others. Bentley believed that snow was beautiful and that the complex structure of the snowflakes should be shared for the world to see. The solution is he began to photograph snow crystals so that he could then share them with the rest of the world. At first, his photographs failed, but Bentley kept trying, eventually making hundreds of snowflake pictures that the world still looks at today. Bentley, later known as the Snowflake Man, died of pneumonia after walking home in a blizzard to get some photographs of the snowflakes. All right, detectives, let's use our summaries to answer a multiple choice summary question. What is the best summary of the selection? A. Bentley got a camera from his parents who spent their savings on it for him when he was 17. The camera was worth more than his father's herd of cattle and taller than a newborn calf on their farm. Bentley took many photographs of snow using a tray to catch the flakes. When he tried to photograph certain snowflakes, they would break if he moved too quickly or melt if he breathed on them, so he had to work quickly and carefully. B. Willie would take photographs during every season. He would take pictures of water droplets on spider webs and even tied a grasshopper to a flower so he could take pictures of it the next morning when dew was covering it. C. Bentley used an old microscope to try to draw snowflakes, but they always melted before he could finish. He wanted to share this beauty with the world. When Bentley got a camera, his first pictures were failures, but he kept trying and succeeded. Later, his photographs were used in magazines and while giving speeches. He was called the Snowflake Man. D. Willie's mother was his school teacher, though he officially only went to school for a few years. He read all the encyclopedias his mother had. His mother even gave him an old microscope to use for looking at tiny objects. Pause your video and text in your answer now. Make sure you choose the one that contains the cause, the problem, and the solution, plus a few added details. Welcome back, detectives. We're almost there. We only have one more task to complete. It's time for us to infer. When we make inferences, we use what we've read, we add it to what we already know, and we're able to draw a conclusion or make an inference. The author likely wrote about Bentley to show, what is most likely the reason that Bentley shared his photographs as gifts, shows, magazines, and even speeches? Pause your videos and discuss these with your adult partner. When you're ready, press play to see the multiple choice version. The author likely wrote about Bentley to show A. How silly it is to photograph snow B. The importance of taking good photographs C. How common snow is in Vermont D. The importance of pursuing your dreams What is the most likely reason that Bentley shared his photographs as gifts, in shows, magazines, and even speeches? A. He wanted to make some extra money. B. He wanted to share the beauty of snowflakes with the world. C. He hoped that would help him become more famous. D. He wanted to make his father proud of his accomplishments. Pause your video and text in your last answer now. Thank you so much for joining us this month, Comprehension Detectives. I hope you enjoyed learning about Snowflake Bentley and may even see some snow for yourself. I look forward to joining you again next month. Remember, we can all be super readers. This is Captain Comprehension, signing off.